What is going on guys? Matt O'Leary back with another video. In today's video, I'll be talking about Malik Washington, a wide receiver from the NFL draft in 2024 that the New York Jets have spent extended time with. I am excited about that. I am all about exciting, versatile NFL draft prospects, especially at the wide receiver position. Smell better naked this Valentine's Day. Fellas, that's right. We always want to be prepared for the moment. You know, like when your junk smells like funk, it can ruin what's to come. That's why I'm excited about today's sponsor, Mando. That's right. Mando whole body deodorant is designed to tackle odor wherever it springs up. Put it on your pits, package feet, and everywhere in between. Mando's long-lasting, clinically proven formula controls odor for up to 72 hours, while the cologne quality scents will make you irresistible to anyone within smelling distance. Make the switch to Mando and smell great all day and all night and the next morning too. Special offer for new customers. Get $5 off a starter pack with our, our exclusive code, excuse me, and link. Use code O'Leary at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot com. I personally, you know how much I talk about bourbon on this channel. I'm a bourbon drinker. That's why I love the bourbon leather scent to this one. This is my favorite one from Mando. Pick it up. Down below in the description, I got you covered with the hookup code. There was a report from Ryan Fowler earlier today who said a name to know in the wide receiver class. UVA wideout Malik Washington has spent extended time with the Jets, Commanders, Browns and Raiders, a source said. AP All-American and first-time All-ACC selection ended the year with seven consecutive 100-plus yard games. Now, what do you need to know about Malik Washington? Well, a few things. Okay, let's give you some background if you don't know anything about him. He's not one of the top, top guys in this wide receiver class. He is projected to go in the mid-round, somewhere around the fourth round, I think, between three to five is probably the range. I don't think he's played well enough to get himself up into the second round. Like we've seen some wide receivers who went to the senior bowl, really ball out. Maybe you're going to find their way into the second round, but due to his performance during the regular season, which we'll get to in a second and his performance at the shrine bowl, I wouldn't be surprised at all. If we see him go at some point late day two, early day three, with the fourth round probably being the sweet spot for him. Now, why is he going to be the fourth, go somewhere in that range in the fourth round if he's a talented player? Well, really the biggest reason for that is his size. He's small. He's a slot receiver. He's pretty much going to be at the next level exclusively a slot receiver at five foot eight, 192 pounds. But don't let the small size and small stature really turn, turn you off from him. Now, I get it. There's risk involved, and he probably will never be great at the next level in beating press coverage, but there's roles for players like that, and it's going to be very important for the New York Jets this year to find value not only at the top of the draft. Sure, you have a first-round pick, but with no second-round pick this year, the Jets, and in particular Joe Douglas and the scouting department, need to do a good job of finding value specifically on the offensive side of the ball in their pit within their picks from rounds three to seven. And sure, offensive line specifically on the interior seems like a good route to go in with either your third or fourth round picks. The Jets have a third and two fourth rounders as of right now. So to me, again, like this is a guy that I would have circled. And I'm glad that the Jets are showing interest despite some of his flaws, which really to me, the biggest flaw is the size and what comes with that and struggling to be press really only being exclusively in the slot. But he transferred to Virginia this past year after spending his first four years of his career at Washington. But this year at Virginia, man, did he play well. 111 catches, 1,384 yards, and nine receiving touchdowns this year. Now, what are the pros? Because I just went through and talked about, well, at his size, that looks like something that's a little bit of a negative. On the positive side, number one, he is an incredible route runner. The Jets could use incredible route runners. That was kind of Elijah Moore's claim to fame, right? And that's why he got drafted. Garrett Wilson, we know, is a great route runner. But besides that, they don't really have, as of right now, 
a stellar wide receiver core in in terms of route running ability and getting open. Getting open is so important. It's something that the Jets wide receiver room really struggled with last year. Again, outside of Garrett Wilson, all these things and negatives said about the wide receiver room are excluding Garrett, who is a special, special player. But he's a very good route runner. He has very good and reliable hands. Another thing that Jets fans were very frustrated with, and rightfully so, was the number of drops that these wide receivers had for the Jets last year. Alan Lazard really struggled in that department. Uh, CJ Uzama is another name who come, comes into mind with the, you know in the struggle department there. But I, I would really like the, a, a wide receiver with reliable hands, and that doesn't usually go. Sp- you know, hand in hand necessarily with, you know, smaller receivers. I feel like a lot of times they get a bad rap for like, hey, this guy's small. He's not going to have great hands, but he has amazing speed, let's say. And this is uh, that honestly isn't really the case with Malik Washington. His speed is fine. He has 449 speed, but that's not, you know, you know, a, a low four threes right there's a big difference between a four three flat and a four four nine it's not four four nine is not slow it's pretty solid speed you know but a slightly above average speed we'll say for a wide receiver but what really makes him special is his the field vision with the ball in his hands and just he's elusive you don't necessarily have to be the fastest guy in the world to be elusive but there's a talent to breaking tackles and just having good vision and finding the space like I don't know. A good example like is Debo Samuel the fastest wide receiver in the NFL? Not necessarily no, but he's elusive and he's good at breaking tackles and he's good in open space. Sometimes that's, you know, that stuff really matters. Look, I'm not saying draft Malik Washington and he's your number two receiver to pair with Garrett Wilson. That's not what anyone is going to say. But as I mentioned earlier, the Jets need help on offense. They were the worst offense by far in the league this year. Granted, Aaron Rodgers didn't play. That's going to make a difference here. But they need depth at these positions. And in day two and day three of the NFL draft, a lot of times these guys are quality depth. Sign or trade for a wide receiver. Draft a guy like Malik Washington who could be your fourth receiver, let's say. And just get more pass catchers in here to help out this wide receiver core, help out Aaron Rodgers and the offense in 2024. I'm happy that the New York Jets are meeting with Malik Washington, and that is absolutely a name to watch. Late day two, early day three, you always get asked, you always get, you know, the questions that I get or just anyone in general is like, who's someone, you know, that's not a top guy who's obvious in the first round that you like in the mid rounds? This is a guy that's going to be a popular answer, and it's easy to see why. I'm excited to see him at the next level, and hopefully it's in green and white. But let me know what you think down below in the comments. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you next time.